Let's create a relational reasoning experiment. So we're going to build a task, we're going to create it new, uh, and I'm going to call it relational reasoning and use the task builder. For this task, I'm going to need some instructions. I'm going to need a task, and I'm going to need a debrief. The instructions is going to be some simple instructions. Here you go. So it's the debrief. And for the task, I'm going to have a fixation and then an image with four image buttons. And we're going to populate the instructions in the debrief with some uh, sample text. This can all be static content because it doesn't change between participant and debrief similarly. also set up the fixation. I find that half a second of cross with a tenth of a second of white space on either side works quite well. So those are the sort of boring bits of the task. This is the meat of the task. Um, <clears throat> what we're going to do in a moment is upload a the stimuli and the spreadsheet and it's the spreadsheet which is going to tell us the content for this area, this area, this area, this area and this area. But so we need to name these areas with what we're going to put in the columns in the spreadsheet so that the system knows what to expect. I'm going to say that if people haven't answered the question within 40 seconds, then they can't answer it. I, w I want to treat that as a wrong response. Um, I'm also going to provide the system with the answer so that in due course I can provide them with feedback. And I'm going to make sudden death and manipulation. This allows us to vary whether people we only take their first answer or whether we allow them to answer, get it wrong, and then change their answer and get it right. So that's done. Let's now upload our stimuli. So this image here is puzzle p1.png. And let's also upload our spreadsheet. Now what this spreadsheet says is first show the instructions and then show a task. And in the puzzle area, show p1.png, which is this image. And that's the puzzle area. And then in response one, show p1response1.png, which is this one. And that's what's going to be shown in this area and so on and so forth with the spreadsheet and we're going to have this trial first every time because it's not part of a randomized block and then we're going to have these three easy trials in a random order and then we're going to have these three harder trials in a random order and then we're going to have the debrief and I'm going to set the default value here for sudden death which is one is first answer only Two is multi response. Basic implementation. Let's preview our task. Here's our first puzzle. These are the easy ones. Let's see if I can get them right. And then I'll get these hard ones wrong.
and we can look at the results. So you can see here in the correct column that I got one, two, the three easy ones, right? You can see here that they're easy. And then here we got these two hard ones wrong and I got the last hard one right. More luck than judgment. But maybe we want to make some improvements. So one of the problems here is it's difficult really to describe what a relational reasoning puzzle is. So let's add a picture so people know what to expect. And let's make this static content instructions 2.png. preview that. So now we've got an example puzzle so people get a sense of what they're going to have to do. What else might we want to add? We might want to add some feedback. So here you go, let's edit this area, let's make a bit of space for the feedback and add a zone and I'm going to make that a feedback zone the settings for the feedback zone will then appear down here. So we want to show the feedback if it's correct. Show the feedback when it's incorrect. And we probably want to show the feedback for half a second. Um, great. So let's commit that. Now let's preview the task and instead of having first answer only, let's look at what multi-response gives us. Let's go. So here's our easy one. Let's get that right. You see we've got a little tick. Let's get this one wrong. So if we get it wrong, we're now given the opportunity to get it right afterwards. And in, what would happen in the metrics is it would be, the whole trial would be shown as wrong. So there you go, um, that's been committed. Let's go back to the relational reasoning task. Let's also create a questionnaire. Let's clone an existing one. Let's go in my project demo and get the demo consent. Um, consent, okay. So here's our demonstration consent that we've seen before. And um, we've got this clone, that's fine. Let's also then create a task. Um, let's clone existing, okay. Let's go to my library. And what I'm gonna do is take a Tower of Hanoi task. Uh, and I don't need to edit it, I'm fine with that. And then let's create our experiment. Uh, I want to create a new experiment. Let's call this um, a relational reasoning experiment. And what I want to do here is I'm going to add our questionnaire, our consent questionnaire. There. Then I'm going to add an order node. We'll see why in a moment. And then I'm going to add the two tasks we've got, which are the relational reasoning and the Tower of Hanoi task. Let's connect these all up. And then I want our participants to do this in a random order. Now I want this with a number of sticks, three sticks and four discs. Save to preview it. This is what it looks like. The 
Towers of Hanoi. So it's really nice, it's implemented in code, um, it uses our graphics engine. I know I've gone wrong. Um, not this over here. This is classically used as an executive function task. Great, um, and it wasn't perfect. Um, so what this experiment will do will give us our consent form, and then we participants will get the relational reasoning task we just built, and then the Tower of Hanoi task in a random order. So half of them will get this one, and half of them will get this one first, and then the other one. And we could use this task to look at, for instance, correlation between uh, puzzle solving and executive function. Let me commit that. Um, and then if we change this to a simple link, we could deploy it.